right, this is Kendall Young. How many of you know Kendall? Kendall has her own company, Diggs. And you're located where? Huh? Oh, um, yeah, hi. Uh, I'm in Glendale, La Cunada, La Crescenta, Montrose. All right, and so Kendall's going to come up and give her listing presentation from start to finish. And in all seriousness, everyone should want to come up on this stage and want to do this. You talk about getting better quickly, this will make you get better quickly. Putting yourself in this situation. Stephanie has done it. Sean McGlynn has done it. This is real, right? Group of your peers, all on the line. You want to just give a little backdrop to your presentation? It's a listing presentation that I did um, a while ago. The situation is that it's a couple that have been planning to move to the Pacific Northwest. Uh, they've been planning actually for a long time. They've talked to a lot of different real estate agents. Um, and it was an exploratory mode until they found the house that they wanted to buy. Uh, they did find the house they wanted to buy, um, and I was brought in to come and talk to them. They found the house, they actually made an offer and got the offer accepted with my help um, in the Pacific Northwest, and now they were interviewing me to help them list and sell their house. It was a contingent offer. And price of the home? Uh, the house is about a million two, very difficult, very difficult to price. It has a legal one bedroom apartment, a uh, guest house, excuse me, not rentable. That's a bedroom, a front room, a kitchen, a bathroom, really, really nice, separate entrance, and there is nothing, I mean nothing, I mean nothing that was like that, so. And this is like the fourth time you're gonna give your presentation? This e version? E third. Third? Yeah. And why are you gonna do this? Because you told me to. <laughs> You wanted to. Yeah, I did. You did. All right. Sure. So let's get going. Where are you going? Get you some water. Thank you. Is there vodka in this? What's it? <laughs> well, I got to get on this side. Oh, that's right. You can't hear me. Yeah, you get over here. And I'll get do over it here. All right. You all set, Paul? Yes. Okay. Do you need the screen or? Is this my good side, Paul? Do you need the screen? I got it. Okay. I think. Okay. Hi, Steve. Thanks so much for um, Having me over to your house, I'm really excited. Is it fair to say that you're excited about this? Can't you tell? I am just so excited to have you here. It seems like you're very, I am excited, very excited, Steve. Yeah, exactly. So um, the house in, in Port Orchard, Port Orchard, right? Yeah, Port yes. Orchard. How's it going? What do you think? Well, we can't wait to get moved up there. OK, all right, excellent. And that's why we've, we've got to get sold all right. quickly. OK. And I want to get top dollar. I don't want to okay. leave any money on the table. Is it fair to say that you're a little concerned about knowing how to pick an agent that's going to get you top dollar, sold, don't leave any money on the table? I mean, we, we certainly want to pick the right person. OK. All right. Any ideas on how you want to do that? Not really. <laughs> OK. <laughs> hopefully, you know, hopefully we'll feel comfortable with you and we'll be able to go forward with you. OK. All right. Great. We'll go through the process. I, I, I definitely have a great way of giving you all the information that you need. What, what do you want to see in this process? What would work for you ideally? Well, you know, three big things. Uh, you know, what do you think you can sell the home for? Mm -hmm. You know, how much time will it take? What are you going to do? And what, what's the, the fee going to be? Okay, great. And have you spoken with any other agents? No, we haven't. You haven't? Have not. Okay, so the six other agents you told me about? No, just kidding. <laughs> All right. Okay, great. So let's just kind of jump into the process. Whenever I start, and just so you all know, um, I'm, I made slides so you guys could see what's going on. Um, and I'm going to try to do this and that at the same time. 
So what I always like to start off with is a roadmap of the selling process. And I do that because I think most homeowners are unaware of just how complicated this process can be. So I have this, I just kind of want to go over it. As you can see, I have uh, put it into three separate sections. What happens before we go on the market? What happens while we're on the market, including showing the properties and our negotiations? And then what happens once you accept an offer and we go into escrow? As you can see, there's a lot of different sections within these phases that just all have to come together in a really specific way in order for us to have a successful sale. Great. Right? So where we are right now, we're just preparing to put your house on the market. We're going over our objectives. I already know that you've got a house um, that you're getting to. You made that offer contingent on the sale of this one. Is that correct? No. No. Okay, great. So what's going on in that process? We got to get this house sold. I can't afford two houses. <laughs> okay, so you did. So it is. You got to sell this one, but it's not contingent on that one no, up there. No. Oh, just a little bit of pressure. Right. Is it fair to say that this is just a bit of a thing? We got to get it right. It's a lot. A okay. lot of pressure. Okay. Excellent. So let's make some good decisions. All right. Um, so that's in our objectives. I needed to know that so I know what your process and strategy should be. Then we're going to talk about the marketplace. We're going to talk about the things that are affecting the decisions and the attitudes and the emotions of your um, ideal buyers. Okay, so we'll talk about strategy, we'll talk about the marketplace and dynamics. And then we're going to talk about how your home fits into that marketplace. And from there, that should give us a good idea of the range that your home is going to sell for. Okay. Make sense? Yes. Homes don't sell for a specific price, they sell within a range. And then we'll talk about the right strategy for you so that you get the you get the dynamic, you get the velocity, you get the experience that you're looking for. Okay? Great. All right, excellent. And then if we have time, we'll get into how we're gonna market it and what that's gonna look like. All right? All right, cool. This, by the way, is for you to keep. It's an example of the type of materials that we use in our business. Very nice. Thank you. We think that, not, we think that pretty sells for more, and so that's how we get more for your house. Okay, so let's talk about the marketplace. This is a chart that shows you what's going on in the city of Glendale, single family homes. The green bars are telling you what has been available for sale in any given month in the last 15 months. And the red line is showing you homes that went into escrow in any given month. And what I'd like you to see is that right here, starting in about December of last year, our inventory was extremely low, well under 100 and, homes. And was there a reason for that? We have incredibly, incredibly small inventory. Part of it is because interest rates are very low and they've been low for a long time. And so people are saying, you know, I'd like to maybe move into a house, but I really like my low interest rate. So they're not putting their homes on the market. And then there are others that are feeling like there's lots of economic instability that might be coming down the road because, you know, Trump. And so they're not making any decisions and going anywhere. Where do I sign? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and so I just think that there's, a, there, there's not a lot of impetus to make changes in people's lives unless they really have to. So they're so not putting their houses on the market. If I look at last April to May, mm -hmm. it jumped by 20 homes. That's mm -hmm. what it did this year. Mm -hmm. And then it kept climbing. Do, mm -hmm. you, do you anticipate the same thing or? It's very hard to tell the future. Um, it seems like this sales is, are pretty steady. This is the lowest that we've been in inventory for a sustained more than two month period in the last probably seven or eight years. So it's difficult to say if this one month in May is an anomaly or if this will continue. My personal feelings, we're two months into June, is that we're going to do better than we did the first part of this year, but nowhere near what we experienced last year. And okay. just to kind of give you a little perspective on just how low our inventory was, is right now, in 2006, which is the peak of our market in the city of Glendale, and my buyers personally were crying in their beer about how there were no homes to buy, we were averaging approximately 500 homes available for sale every month. 
in 2006, peak of the market. Now we're averaging, until this, this beginning of this year, we're averaging about 90 to 100 homes on market, but the first five months of this year. Wow, that's a big shift. Say, big shift, big shift. And then if you can also see the amount of people that are entering into escrow during that time period has been, if you even out the curves, approximately the same, very, very even, very, very How much. How about back in 06? Back in 06, we were looking at about, let's see, 500 homes on market. We're looking at about 100 to 120 homes going into escrow at any given time. So there were more homes going into escrow. There was also more choice. Right. One of the reasons that we are seeing somewhere between 50 and 60 homes going into escrow every month is just a constriction of the marketplace. There's just not enough homes to go around. If you can take a look here in March, which is typically the start of our spring season, in March we had one almost one. as many homes go in market as there were on the market. Okay, here's another way of looking at the relationship between the number of people willing to buy and their number of homes actually on the market. This is something called month supply of inventory. So what this tells us is if no new homes come on the market as of this moment, but buyers continue to buy at the same rate, how long will it take for all of the homes to be sold? So we're looking at, on average, over the last 15 months, about two months or a little bit less. Right now, it's 1.7 months worth of inventory, okay? To put that in perspective, zero to four months worth of inventory means that it's a seller-controlled market. It means there's not enough homes to go around. It means the sellers are kind of calling all the shots. For us to be at two months worth of inventory means we're not just in a seller's market, we're in a very strong seller's market, and that's good news for you. Okay. My, my price is going up. Keep well, talking. let's talk about prices. Okay. Funny, you should ask. So I've got a couple of different ways to look at prices. The first way is the way the newspapers tend to look at prices, and that's the median home sale price. And as you can see, we've been fairly steady, a nice, steady, gentle upgrade going up, 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 up. And then you can see here in May, it shot up to $917,000 as the median. What this is telling me, because I'm looking at all of these homes, not a lot of homes to look at, so I can tell the story on all of them. What I'm really seeing is not so much that the absolute value jumped in May. What happened is the homes that came on the market were at a million and going up. And there were very, very few homes that came on the market between 750 and 8. In fact, if you know of anybody who wants to sell their house in that price range, I can sell 10 of them. Great. Okay. But we are seeing strong sales in these upper ranges, a million and up, and that's what this median price is showing. And that's good news for you because you're going to be in that over a million category and there's lots of buyers who can and are willing to do so. A better idea of the pricing trends in the marketplace is my average price per square foot. And as you can see here, basically it's, flat. A more, it's, a, it's basically flat until you started getting into those months where there was no inventory, right? We were looking at um, December through April, there was very, very low inventory, and that's where I see my largest jump in average price per square foot. Interestingly, May, where we had lots of homes come on the market, my average price per square foot went down. Now, the thing that you need to understand is that the larger the house is, the smaller the price per square foot on average. And so what I mentioned to you, lots of expensive homes came on the market in May, and that's why our price per square foot went down a little bit. It's not necessarily that our prices are plummeting, okay? Great. So strong, strong pricing, but it's not like things are going in a hockey stick manner, okay? All right, last thing that you wanted to know about is you wanted to know how long is it going to take my house to go into escrow? Right? So this is a chart showing average days on market for the city of Glendale, and it's kind of a roller coaster ride. And then during, so you can see here at where it's 58 days um, on the market, which is in February, that's reflecting what was going on during the holidays of November and December. Okay? So now that we're into the spring market, we're looking at more 45, 47 days, just so that you know, my average is 21 days on market. But for the city of Glendale, it's looking around 45 to 50. Great. Okay. Does that? How does that work for you in terms of your timing in Port well, Orchard? Sooner is better, obviously. Will so. 45 days work for you? 21 well, days. I, I don't have a choice. What does that mean? We've got to sell, so it's okay. going to take whatever, whatever it takes. There are decisions that you can make that can affect 
whether your house sells sooner or longer. Right, lower the price. That's one of them. That's not all of them. Okay. Okay. So we were, is it fair to say that you're interested in figuring out what your choices are on that front? Yes. Okay. Excellent. So let's get into your, is there any, any questions about no. market dynamics? No. Okay. So really good time to sell. Seller's market. Prices are good. Maybe going up a little bit. Days on market going down. Okay. All right. Let's get into your house. This is a, uh, a, a reflection of the tax record, the tax assessor's record. And what it shows is that your lot size is 6,500. Sorry, guys. Your lot size is 6,500. Your building square footage is about 2,400. And I'm, um, I'm assuming that this includes the space for your legal and permitted one bedroom um, yes, guest, yes. right? Okay, great, so 2,400. And then you have a total of four bedrooms, so three bedrooms in the main house, and then you've got your one bedroom in the guest house. And then your total bathrooms, three bathrooms, two bathrooms in the main house, one bathroom in the guest house. Right. Does that all sound about right? Yes. Okay, excellent. So that means that I'm comparing you to the right thing. So I've got a few homes that I've picked that are recent sales in your neighborhood. And here's the thing about our homes in Glendale. They're all unique, they're all different. We don't live in a tract home city, right? So that means that when the buyers are looking at your house and they're looking at comparable sales, they're pretty much comparing kiwis to watermelons. Really difficult. And you're gonna be doing the same, we'll all be doing the same in order to figure out what is a likely sales price for your home. So when we go through these, I'm gonna give you my perspective, having shown thousands upon thousands of buyers' homes, of what it is that the average buyer is reacting to, and then I want you to give me your opinion. Do you think that your home would sell for more or less than this particular home, okay? Right. Not you particular, but you know the average buyer. Okay, so let's go for the first one. This is a house on Cedar Street. It sold for $1,117,500. It is four bedrooms, but remember, it's four bed. I don't actually, I just want to let you know, I don't have any comparable sales that have a legal guest house like yours. That's a really good thing for you, but it also means that your contiguous house is not exactly the same as these homes. So this is a four bedroom house, all contiguous in the house, and it is 2,000 square feet, and yours is 24 with the guest house, and approximately 18 for the main house, okay? <clears throat> the lot size is approximately the same as your house. And this is a two-story home, which buyers often feel is more prestigious. And I find that they often will pay more for a two-story home. This is the 1200 block of Cedar, so it's one block a little higher than yours. And in Rossmoyne, remember, it's, we have that value layer. It kind of starts at Glen Oaks Boulevard and it marches its way up to Mountain. The, higher, the closer you get to Mountain, typically the more prestigious the location. So did you see this house? I did. How does it compare? I think that it has a lot of the romance that your home has, which is one of your strong suits. It's got lots of architectural detail, which is very similar to your home. And it also has an entertainer's oriented backyard, which is also similar to your house. How, and it has um, bathrooms and kitchens that have been remodeled similar to your house, although I think the quality of remodeling in your kitchens and bathrooms is probably higher. This looks like the quality that was done probably a little bit more for fixing it or they thought that they might be selling in the not too distant future. Also has a trestle beam ceiling in the living room similar to yours. So a little more prestigious location. Um, it's a little bit more pre pre prestigious in its presentation because the two-story home um, but it doesn't have the guest apartment, and the quality of remodeling is good, but I think yours is a little bit better. Do you think that your home would sell for more or less what, than a house like what, this? What do you think the guest home is worth? Very, very difficult. You ha it's a beautiful guest house. Right, so what, what does, what's I, the, if you had to put a number on it, I know it's just about a guess. A, a, about seventy five to 100000 just, just kind of a guess, it's really a feel. We have so few legal guest homes in Glendale that it's not like I have a ton of experience and say empirically it's that much. So if we didn't have the guest house mm -hmm. and we're just comparing our house versus this one, mm -hmm. which is a better value? This house, because it's By a how four, much? 50,000. Okay. In your gut, do you think that your house would sell for more or less than that house, given what I've just shared with you? 
what you just shared. If mm -hmm. I do the math, mm -hmm. it would sell for maybe twenty-five to 50000 more. Okay. Seems like you're a really logical guy. I've been told that. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think that the emotionality of this house is probably very, very similar. Okay. I love that you're laughing. Thank you. You're For welcome. a logical guy like that, that's awesome. <clears throat> okay, so I think that your house would probably sell for more than this one. Okay? All right, I'm going to give you another one. This is actually just a few houses away from your house. This is a house on Everett. It is the same block as yours, so it's going to have the same prestige, um, if you will. Also a smaller house for total square footage. This one's 2,000 square feet. The contiguous house on your home is about approximately 18, so just a reminder. And this one has four bedrooms. And lot size is very, very similar. This is an English Tudor style home. So that's different. Um, the other so one was why, why did this sell for more than that? This one, I think, had a better presentation. So this one was professionally staged, had a real contemporary feel to it. The kitchens and bathrooms were also remodeled in a way. Is this recently more, remodeled? Or? Um, yeah. Okay. I, I would say within the last couple of years. And your home was remodeled about 10 years ago. It's a very different style, much more, tra much more traditional and classic. This one is more, dare I say, hipster. Okay. And hipster definitely, it is. <laughs> and hipster, dare I say, is um, playing super well with the market. It also is very attractive to the buyers and the buyer's agents that are selling more in urban Los Angeles. And these people are migrating more into Glendale as they're getting priced out of their own territories and neighborhoods. And so I think that this one when sold. When did this sell? This one, uh, this one sold, excuse me, where are we at? This one sold in Jan yeah, just this one sold in oh, January, January. Okay. right? So there is there has been some price increases as a general market from January until now, and this one sold for a million one twenty five. Okay. Okay. So very very popular with the buyers that are buying today. However, it doesn't have your guest apartment. Um, and it might be a little bit, aesthetically, a little bit more appealing to the buyers coming up from urban Los Angeles. Do you think your house would sell for more or less than this one? Well, I, this looks good on paper. I've got 400 extra square feet, mm -hmm. so. Right, and we didn't get into this, but your backyard has a lot more functionality than this one. The backyard on this house is very neat, tidy, and clean, but your house has the, uh, back, the barbecue and its own little barbecue patio that's enclosed. You have the covered patio that's absolutely gorgeous, and then you have the finished garage with the cabinetry, the washer and dryer, and the little home office area. Right. So there's a lot going on in your backyard that isn't reflected in this one. So I think that your house is gonna sell for more than this one. Now, I really didn't have one that was just like your house, right? So the next one is a real step up in its sales price. And so let me give you some perspective. This is on Ross Moyne, and Ross Moyne is a very prestigious street. And this one is a two-story romantic Spanish on a very wide frontage. In general, buyers are gonna pay more for the prestige look of this house. The three baths. It's three bedrooms, that I mean, is three correct. Three bed, two baths. Two bathrooms, That's... almost 2,400 square feet. So we're looking at really large, spacious, spaces. Forgive me for the alliteration. Okay. We also have a lot of romantic architectural detail in this house. The kitchens and bathrooms are remodeled in very, in very much in the same vein as yours, traditional and classic. The kitchen is a little heavy in its presentation. The bathrooms are very much in keeping with the 1920s yeah, this, romance. This doesn't look as good on paper as that, the last one. Why is that? I'm just visually. Okay. How about, in, did you see this in person? I did, yeah. Nicer house? Um, yeah, it, it's, it's very, it, it's much more, that one, the last one was very clean and classic and crisp. This one is very romantic, very prestigious. Again, the street, can't emphasize that enough. And then the backyard has a pool and entertainment patio. That one sold for a million three uh, fifty one. And that one sold just in May, just a few weeks ago. Okay, so this one um, very much is going to attract um, 
a higher priced buyer than probably the location of your house. And all of the square footage, all of the 2,400 square feet is in the contiguous house, which appeals to a larger right. population. Okay. There are some people who want that apartment, but not everybody, okay? So we've got this between the one million one twenty-five, which we're pretty sure that your house would sell for more than that. Well, I, I want to get a million too. Do you think that's reasonable? Oh yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah. You, are you comfortable with a million two? Yes. Excellent. Then I think we are definitely in there. I think your Do house. Do you price it at a million two? Do you price it higher? Do you well, price okay, it lower? Well, okay. Let's let's actually talk about pricing strategy. Now, I I have this like little educational piece that I love to give, and on the surface it's gonna sound like it's pretty obvious. You asked, you said to me, price, right? Right. It's high, medium, and low. But let me give you the consequences of each pricing strategy so that you can get the velocity and the experience that you're looking for. So on the high side, which is looking like a million two fifty or maybe higher, that's what I call the traditional or aspirational pricing strategy. And what we're looking to do there is we're looking to test the upper ranges of the marketplace, and I know you'd like to get every dollar out of this one. However, that's usually a pricing strategy that works for someone who's not in a hurry. And you said that you'd like to get this done as soon as possible, right? right? Second pricing strategy is the mid-range, which is right there at a million two. And at the mid-range, or maybe just a titch below it, what you're trying to do is look like an obvious value to the buyers that are looking on the internet, and your buyers are gonna find you first on the internet. Are we clear on that one? You yeah. Tell me. I, they, they're ninety-two percent of the buyers are using the internet to shop for homes. So they're going to see your home first on the internet. We want to look like an obvious value to them, get them excited to see the house, and the goal is to get two or, if we're lucky, three or four offers. Not a lot, but just enough so that you get better choice and better control of the type of buyer that you get into. Have you ever had thoughts? Oh, let's put in a statement. Um, is it fair to say that you might have some fears about accepting a buyer and then having them ask for a bunch of money on repairs or maybe even fall out of escrow? They can ask for whatever they want. Right, but you may or may not give it to right. them. Got it. What I like about the fair market value is that if we get those two, three, or four offers, then you might have a little bit more control. And what I like to say, get a buyer with the proper attitude of gratitude. Because if they've got people behind them, they're going to be less inclined to play games. Okay? And then the last pricing strategy is what I call event pricing, and that's going to be at or below the low end of our range, which is somewhere around a million one fifty. Okay, if you're below that, then what you're trying to do is to look like a screaming deal on the internet, get lots and lots of people emotional and whipped up, and you leverage that emotion to push the price up so that it's ideally even above the market value. So if, if I want to get a million two or more, where would you price it? Probably the fair market value because I Which think Which would be what? A million two, a million one ninety-nine, one ninety-five, right in there. It should get you a million two, maybe a little bit more, and more importantly, a little bit more control over the buyer's attitude. Great. Sound good? Yes. Okay, excellent. So let's go with a million two. So you are going to be looking at agents and you've already told me you're wondering how it is that you're going to pick the agents going to do the best job for you. That's correct. Okay, great. So let's get into how I do that. And I've got a little bit, um, I like show and tell. So let me do that for you here. Or I would if the iPad was going to. Come on. Okay, there we go. All right. So, this is what we do to stand out from the crowd and deliver markedly different results. Um, I, I know that the market has changed. The real estate industry has changed because, you know, internet. And that has fundamentally changed how the consumers are expecting things, how they're digesting information, even how they're making decisions, right? And I've been doing this now for 30, almost 31 years. Yes, I'm that old. Don't look at my hair. Um, and back in my day, it was so easy to sell a house. All you had to do was you know, put a sign on the yard, pick a price, snap a lockbox on, 
maybe write some ad copy, and then sit back and hope that offers are gonna come in. And that's all a real estate agent had to do back when I started selling homes. But, and it was so easy that really any agent could do it. And even that guy? Yeah. <laughs> yes, even that guy. I've actually had the fun experience of doing business with some of these real estate agents. But today's consumer, they expect a lot more. I'm guessing that you're expecting a lot more than any of these yahoos. Yes, please. Okay, excellent. So I launched Digs because I wanted a brand and I wanted an experience for the consumers that was fundamentally different. This is actually a picture of my office and it reflects the way I like to do business. Transparent, open, honest. You shouldn't have to guess what I'm doing. I shouldn't have to guess what's on your mind. And I wanted to make sure it's that- on my mind is a million two. Okay, well if I told you we'd get a million two, would you sign the contract now? Are after, you ready? After we go through okay. this. Okay, all right. <laughs> I figured I should try. <laughs> okay, great. Um, and so at Diggs, we know that the consumer is consuming the information differently, making decisions differently. And we know that for them, it's not about what's obvious. It's about what's behind the scenes, what's unseen. That's what truly makes the difference. And it's also what sets Diggs apart. And we know that it takes a lot of effort to make that home sale truly successful. Okay? So, great. right, you're probably sitting there and you're thinking, great, how are you going to do that? Okay. I know that every client has a unique situation. Your situation of having bought a place up in, in the Pacific Northwest is different than, say, Susie Kwan down the block, and it's different from Joe Schmo six blocks over. Your situation is unique. Your house is unique. Your house has its own story. And my job here is to tell the story of your home so that we not only reach a lot of buyers, I mean. So what does that mean exactly? What, what is the story of my home? Oh, the story of your home is fantastic. What is it? The story of your home is of a romantic courtyard Spanish with an amazing original 1920s atrium with a 1930s glass top with a chicken wire, so cool. It has got this amazing full guest house that is a separate entrance, which is gonna appeal to someone who either has, who works from home, so a professional, like maybe a lawyer. So uh, how do you tell the story? What, what does that mean exactly? Well, I'm so glad that you asked. Let's get into it. All right. We want to make sure that when we tell that story, we not only attract a lot of buyers, we don't want to attract the one buyer that really wants what your house is because that buyer, they're going to pay top dollar, right? So here's how we do it. The first thing is we sit down and we figure out what do you want, need, and desire when it comes to preparing your home for sale. Not everybody wants to do the same thing. You may, I don't know, is it fair to say that you are willing to invest in the, um, the marketing of your home so that you do get top dollar? You'd have to define what that means. And we will get into it. Right. So we'll talk about exactly what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do. But whatever that is, we will then... Do you I think we have to make big changes to the house? No. But if you wanted to, we might actually get an even higher than a million to. But given your time constraints, it's probably not a good idea. Okay. All right. The second thing that we need to do is explain your options. Based on what you're willing to do, tell you what your options are, how you can spend your money best, how you can make the most amount of profit. And then we need to craft a plan that actually is affordable and profitable. So whatever it is that you're willing to spend and whatever resources you have, we will use those to maximize your profit. Great. Okay. All right. Excellent. And don't think that you're going to be doing this alone. Many people at this point in the presentation, they're feeling like this is overwhelming. I'm trying really hard not to ask a question. <laughs> Would that be fair? Well, I'm not sure. What, uh, it's not that it's overwhelming because I'm not sure what you're going to ask us to do. It it's not seems so the house seems like it's in pretty good condition. Mm -hmm. it, it seems like your house is in great condition, and what's necessary is different than what you're willing to do. What's necessary is, frankly, nothing. Your house looks great. 
what you might be willing to do in order to maximize your profit is a different thing altogether. So let's take a look at what some of the things that we've been able to do for some of our clients and the choices that they've made and what that's done for them. And then you can choose for yourself. Part of what we are trying to handle is the details. So in your particular case, much of the home has been maintained. But if there are things, because we haven't been through the house in detail, I've only been here for a few moments. But once, I go th once we decide to work together and they go through your house in every room, we may identify things that would be in your best interest and profitable to fix or change. And it's those details that will, will bring you maximum profit. Now there might be, it might be handy people, there might be landscapers, cleaners, there's a whole host of people that you might want to employ. And Diggs works with some of the best local professionals in the marketplace. We'll even help you with some project management. Staging is probably the biggest place where we can make you a huge profit. I don't know if we're going to have the time to do professional staging, given what's going on with your situation. So you, you, you would want us to take all the furniture out? and It is not what I want. It is what you decide you would like uh, to do I mean, for Max Profit. You're, you're recommending that? No, I am not recommending that. I am merely putting it as an option for maximum profit. I don't think I want to do that. That's not a problem at all. Okay. This is something that has happened. Now, <laughs> when we take what you have done, the magic is stopping the internet buyer in their tracks so they pay attention to your home and they get drawn into the story to decide whether or not they connect with it. Okay. Have you shopped on the internet for the homes when you were looking at Pacific yes, Northwest? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Pictures right. make all the difference. Right. Have you ever done this? You looked at it, you're like, no. All the time? No. All the right? time. All the time. Pretty quick. In fact, I have only got seven seconds to stop an internet shopper in their tracks. That's it. Don't blink. And that so long? I, that mm -hmm. long. Okay. Seven seconds. And if I don't capture their attention in seven seconds, it's nope. So how are you going to do that with our home? I'm so glad you asked. Okay. <laughs> how do we do it? We do it with um, awesome, awesome ad copy that is telling a story. It's not a recitation of facts. It is pulling from the emotion and connecting with our ideal buyer to get them to come to the house. It is amazing professional photography. Now, when you were shopping on the internet, did, there seems like there's two types of pictures that I see for homes. Either it's crappy cell phone pictures of open toilets, or it is 75 pictures of an 1,100 square foot house. 20 of them are the first are the front of the house. Have you experienced that? I have, absolutely. When we're doing our professional photography, it's telling the story of your home in a way that will maximize those seven seconds and bring them into the story of your house. Is there an optimal number of photos that you should have? Is According to Zillow, it's 19, but it will depend on your house. And do you start the front, inside, the back? How, is there a flow? Almost always, I'm starting as if I was guiding them through the house from front to back. Not always though. There's going to be times when I might start with something else that's a hero shot. Okay. okay. The other thing that we do, talking about that, guiding them through the experience of seeing your house, we actually use um, 3D scans of your house, which is very much like Google Street View for your house. So if you were on your own device, you could actually control where you were going in the house by poking at this room or that. And you can actually go into different rooms of the house, different parts of the room, and then look at it from a different side. What this does is it's the closest thing to being in your house before you actually get there. And it's, I believe, what the consumer is expecting from their home shopping experience. This is what they're going to use to figure out, yes, I am going to travel outside of my little neighborhood to something that might get me a better situation. Okay? We've had great experience with these, and it's done a lot. Now, the other part of working with a real estate agent is that you should want us to cut down on your hassle, your chaos, and your fear of the unknown. Right. Okay. That's right? Yes. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> At Diggs, we've worked very, very hard to create a hassle-free experience so that your transaction is as smooth as we can make it. And that doesn't happen by accident. In fact, I have an entire team that I've assembled carefully, piece by piece, person by person, to make sure that you get the best experience possible and we sell your home so for the most amount of money. So am I dealing with you or am I dealing with your team? Some of these people are administrators. By and large, you're going to be dealing with me and my lead administrator.
administrator, which is Simone, who is way better than I am at certain aspects of the transaction. And do I meet these people? You'll be meeting Simone. When we decide that we'll be working together, I'll do the listing contract with you, and then Simone will sit down and go through all of the disclosures so that you can get comfortable with the way that she communicates, and then she can start feeling so like she knows what she's doing. So are you, like, off to the next house? And no. <laughs> you are going to hear from me every single Monday afternoon, no matter what, roundabout, I start my calls at one o'clock and then I go for as long as I need to to call all of my clients every Monday, no matter what. The first and if week I or need two, to reach you, I can reach you. You have my bat line. Okay. Now, when I'm actually sitting down with someone face to face, not only will I not answer your call, I won't even answer your text. That's why Simone is sitting at a, at a desk all day long, and she is a licensed agent who has sold many, many homes, and she'll be able to not only answer your questions, but she'll probably be able to solve your problems. Okay. So you will, be, you will have what you need, when you need it, whenever you need it. Well, sort of. We don't actually work past 10 o'clock at night, okay? All right, so that is our team. Now, at the top of this presentation, you indicated that you were wondering, how are you going to pick an agent, and are, is the agent, i.e. me, telling you the truth? Can I actually do something for you? Sure. Okay. So I have a few case studies of some homes that we have done. Now, in these particular homes, they did want, need, and desire a full staging, but the experience there, that we delivered to them... Is there any of these that would be applicable to my home, or are there different situations? Every situation is unique. Right. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Great. So in this particular case, if, if the home looks familiar, it's because this is the home that I used when I was creating my initial marketing. This home is case study number one, and we were able to sell it for $161,000 over what they expected when we initially sat down to talk. And this is some before and after pictures. So, so are you saying that's $161,000 over my million two price? No, because you are not these people. I understand what I'm saying is they had a price like I had my million two price. We sat down and we talked about what we thought their house would sell for at the moment that we sat down to list the home. Right, which, which was? Uh, 950000 All right, and you sold it for, so what did you do? We actually went through the entire property and they had a, very, a relatively small budget, $10,000. And we use that $10,000 very, very strategically, just as we would with whatever you're willing to do or not willing to do, strategically for maximum profit. Once we were done, the results were amazing. And so we decided to put it on the market for a million and, fifty. And every time you've done this, you've gotten more back than the investment? I can think of one instance where we did not in my 30 years. Okay, and it was a difficult home and then they later got divorced, but we won't talk about that. All right. <laughs> and so once we actually debuted it on the market, Brave Reviews did a great job of marketing it to the urban Los Angeles buyers who I thought would be our ideal buyer. Remember, I'm looking for that story and connecting it with the ideal buyer. Brought them up from urban Los Angeles. In fact, all of the offers we received did come from urban Los Angeles, and we ultimately entered into contract for a million one hundred and one thousand eleven thousand dollars. Okay. Great. Right. Case study number two. Love these people. These were a pair of octogenarians. So this is certainly your number, not huh? you. One sixty. Well, there were two of them. So these were certainly not like you. If you were going to ask me, are they just like you? They are not. They are octogenarians. And they were living in the home for 56 years. They wanted that full transformation that we're able to do. Um, and we were able to get the home into escrow for $160,000 more. What did they more. spend? I'll give you, uh, I'll let you know. Oops, sorry, guys. Go back. OK. All right. OK. Um, these particular people, when we first sat down, they'd been in their house for, eight, for 56 years, brought up a huge family, and while it was very well maintained, I had things like navy blue carpets, lovely pink sateen drapes. We had the gingham wallpaper with the little goose that were at the top wearing the little neckerchiefs, very much not like your So home. how long did this process take? Um, this one took a while. We actually, they decided they wanted to do the transformation. 
they, we decided that they should move out of the house to where they were gonna go. They gave me a budget of $20,000. We did all of the project management, got all of the, all of the estimates, um, oversaw all of the work, and when we were done, very pleased with the results, we decided to list the home for 989,000. So, how long? was the transformation process? Because we needed to refinish hardwood floors and do some a lot more than just paint, although we did do paint, it was a total of three and a half weeks. And how long was it on the market? 14 days. Recent or older? This one was last year, March of last year. Okay. Correct. And we sold it for a million twenty-five. And what's really important about this one is that there was a million twenty-five with no loan, no appraisal, no inspection, no repairs, and a home that's been on the market for fifty-six or had not had, that they'd owned for fifty-six years. That was a big deal to those particular sellers. Last case study was a home that also had not been significantly improved in the last thirty years. We were able to do that one hundred and thirty-one thousand over their anticipated price. When we first went to see the house. Um, most of the windows didn't open, no air conditioning, galvanized plumbing, did have a new roof, um, and it needed a lot of work, and it was owned by two very, very busy professionals who had basically collected a lot of, a lot of furniture and antiques from their various families and shoved them in the house. So they believed in the trans, trans, uh, transformation as well. They decided to move all their stuff out. Um, and while $699 was the original price because of the condition of the home and actually below what some of the comparable sales were, after their $8,000 investment, um, we were All able right, to... So what, it, what do you want to do in this house? In this house, I would love to get my fluff and puff guy in here. That is something that we do free of charge to you. We bring in some accessories, rearrange some of your furniture, take some of it out. All right. Um, maybe put in some fresh flowers, a few other accessories, flow pillows, that sort of thing, and then execute our marketing. So is there any work that you want to do to the house uh, other than Again, touch up? I have not had a chance to go through your home in detail. So you do that or someone else does that? If you decide that we're going to be working together, I'm going to go through your house room by room and then we will make a punch list of what needs to happen. When will you do that? As soon as you decide that you're going to work with me. Would okay. you like to do that? Keep going. Well, actually, that's pretty much it. Okay. What, uh, what fee do you charge? 6%. And that includes all of the resources that I use to um, have the manpower so that you get everything that you need when you want it, to project manage, whatever it is that we decide to do, as well as all of the marketing, including that 3D scan. And it includes the commission that we give to the other side. Aren't most agents charging five? That is true. But most agents are not getting the results that I'm getting. Okay, so tell me why I should pay you more. Because I'm getting a lot more for the houses. So the question that I have for you is, what's more important to you, the commission that you're paying or your ultimate net? I mean, our house is in pretty good condition, correct? Pretty good. And we're in a good market. Pretty good. And I'd have to have a pretty lousy agent to screw this up. Right? Depends on how you define screw it up. Not, Are you looking not get, not get that million two price? The million two is something that I think I can get, but I'm really not shooting for that. What are you shooting for? As much as I can possibly get out of the marketplace. Which? You had mentioned that the house that you bought is a little bit more than what you were hoping to spend. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, great. So it's important that we get as much money into your pocket at the end of the day. Agreed. Excellent. So what I did in these case studies is I made sure that I took the situation of that particular seller, and every seller is unique, and it is true, you are not like these sellers. But the ability to take that and maximize it because remember, we're telling the story of your house. We're not just sticking right. it on the market. So tell me why I should hire you, and tell me why I should pay you 6%. You want to hire me because you want to sell the house for as much money as the marketplace will bear, not just the obvious price. And you want to pay me 6% because you want somebody who will do that so you will maximize the money you put in your pocket. All right, let's do it. Excellent. Thank you.